Welcome to Dream Infinity Studios tutorial on how to create particle beams um, with Photoshop and a little hint of Illustrator. Um, particle beam is not necessarily an official name of anything, it's just a name that I kind of gave to myself. Basically what they are are these little funky light streaks that you can see on like a lot of my work such as Eternosomnium and um, Nocturnal Combustion which is this piece right here. And these are all created, these little light streaks are all created just in Photoshop. Nothing special, nothing, you know, no 3D program, no filters, just purely strictly Photoshop and a little hint of Illustrator. So um, I must warn you though that this tutorial is mostly um, chance and even right now for myself I'm not even sure the kind of result that I'm, I'm going to get it's not um, pre-made or anything and I don't even have an example um, to show you because it's not going to exactly really look like the final example but um, this is a photo that I'm going to be working with today um, it's a very nice photo of a model it's just kind of posing in a kind of a mystic way uh, it's, it, it's a good um, to work with um, if you have black uh, f f photos with like black backgrounds, dark backgrounds, especially someone standing um, in a dark black background, it really works uh, real well uh, with particle beams and whatnot. But and first of all, we're going to go into Illustrator. Now, as you can see um, in Photoshop, I, I already have the photo up. Um, I'm going to go to Layers and make sure that it's not locked. Um, and this is the photo that I'm working with. Now, we're going to go to Illustrator um, and now this isn't uh, really a tutorial about Illustrator, so I am already going to automatically assume that you already know fundamentals of Illustrator. But I'm going to go slow on this. On Illustrator, I'm just going to open a document any size. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to choose a black box with the um, foreground, for, I mean the fill color uh, filled with black, and I'm just going to make a square and just fill the whole entire Illustrator document with black. And I'm going to lock it by pressing Control 2 or Command 2 if you're on a Mac. Now it, it locks and we have a little black background. And now ne the next thing we're going to do is create some funky lines. Just a little beautiful line. Uh, maybe something like that might work. So after I created the line with the pen tool, um, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to outline this or outline this white. Now I have I've outlined this white. I'm going to select it, pressing the Alt key. I'm going to duplicate it by clicking and dragging out one more time. Alt key, and I'll hover your mouse over it and turn it to an arrow with black arrow with a white arrow in the background, and then just drag it out. It makes a duplicate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the points and I'm going to zoom in right away. And I'm going to. Uh, do my best to join the points together. And then go down here and do the same. Now, it's really important to join the points together. Once the arrow key locks white, that means it's joined. Now what we're going to do is zoom out and select both of them. And on the Pathfinder tool, we're going to go into this little thing right here and hit it. And then hit expand and it becomes one whole shape. Now we got that going, we're going to fill it now. And all we have to do is just switch this, just toggle this back and forth and you see that it's literally filling and not filling. So we're going to get this, copy, and go to Photoshop. Now in Photoshop we're going to paste this beautiful part after ever since CS2 is smart object options. And smart object lets you literally paste vector um, objects into Photoshop and be editable anytime um, in the future. And as you can see, you see this little um, bounding box that gets shown up and I can scale this infinite amounts of time without the quality being lost. So that being said, that being said, Oops. I'm going to paste it in here. I want to make a duplicate. Just right click, duplicate layer. And I'm going to hide the original just so I can go back to it later. Now with the 
one that I duplicated, I'm going to kind of, you know, try to size it or make a little, you know, composition in Photoshop. Now again, the quality doesn't get lost. I mean, I can resize this out all over again and it'll still look nice and crisp. So let's try working with what I had before. Now I'm going to place this um, little line and uh, now we're going to get to work on it. Now the first thing you want to do is go to filter, distort, twirl. Now twirl filter is a beautiful filter if you don't abuse it. It kind of gets gimmicky after a while. But um, we're going to work on this and we're going to apply some twirl to it. And we might have to do it a number of times. And again as I stated this is all really about chance and it's not there's really no set rule and so if you don't you know I currently don't really like the result that I'm getting from the twirl filter so I'm going to work on it some more maybe twirl it a lot more see what happens okay now we're getting some interesting stuff going okay now um, of course it's not all that finished yet but I want to make it look like this little particle beam is coming out of her fingertips you know, in a really nice beautiful line but before we do that we're going to kind of clean this up a little bit with the Gaussian blur now we're going to go into Gaussian blur and we're going to do maybe like 1.4 or maybe 1.8 pixels and blur it so now it looks a little cleaner just a little bit then I'm going to duplicate this layer and duplicate it with the blur and every um, um, layer effects enhanced and then after that I am going to rasterize both layers oh wait no 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 don't not sorry don't rasterize both layers the first thing we're going to do is um, rasterize a top layer and then we're going to colorize it with the hue and saturation control we're going to sa um, colorize just kind of color in the beam. And once we colorize, we're going to have to brighten up the saturation a lot, as you can see here. Now, after you colorize, you want to apply the layer effect of overlay. Now, make sure that the layer is, the colored layer is on top, not the bottom, to get this little cool effect going. Now we got that going. Uh, we're going to clean it up and what we're going to do is merge both of these into one layer. Now once you've merged it, just um, just to warn you, the layer is going to be um, rasterized. So you're not going to be able to scale it up and down anymore. And then we're just going to erase some unnecessary parts. So far on this one, just for the sake of being clean or trying to clean it up, I'm going to delete most of the swirl. Now we got one thing going. Now I know this um, little line is still a little dirty. It's okay. We're going to um, go into that and fix that. Um, on the next tutorial we're going to move on to adding more swirls and just enhancing this overall abstract altogether with some neat little effects. So stay tuned.